All right, and welcome back to another episode of Catching Colorado. And we are doing another fly tying video today. Um, I've been tying a lot of paired-to-gown patterns, and I really like them for a lot of reasons, but um, I think my favorite reason is that they're just different. Um, they're kind of a new, more popular uh, fly at the moment. Um, we were just having a conversation actually at Austin Par Shop here in Denver, and uh, it's Discount Fishing Tackle. And we were saying how they're basically ice jigs. <laughs> but uh, regardless, they're awesome little patterns to tie. And I wanted to tie one that was fairly unique uh, in pink because John, who fishes on the channel a lot, he's a big pink fan. So I'm going to start with a Vivas 30M body quill. This is the BQ12, but it's basically just a pink. And I'm going to get a couple wraps right behind this bead here, fairly tight wraps. And then I'm going to take my scissors here and I'm just going to snip that tying quill free. As a next step, what I'm going to do is take a 0 0.020 piece of lead we are going to rotate that slotted bead so that the squared off end is down. And then we're gonna slide this lead basically right in the back of that slotted bead. And we are gonna tie it very close to the end here. And then very similar to, if you've seen the Yuke's bug pattern, as we work the thread forward, we are going to bend this lead forward and back until it breaks off clean and that'll give us a nice uh, bead that stays in place, and then also a little ramp that we can work on building up as we go. And what I'm gonna do now is just cover the entirety of the hook, and we are gonna come all the way back, not quite to the bend. Um, I would say that's about good. And then I'm gonna bring this body quill back forward, and we're gonna stop just behind the ramp that we built. The next material that we're gonna tie in is a piece of Coque de Leon feathers. Um, again, I really like the ginger color. I think uh, having the ends with that little bit of ginger coloration on them uh, really helps this fly. So I'm just gonna peel away about three strands of that Coque de Leon. I don't wanna to take too many. Um, just a very thin tail is what we're working on here. So something like that. And then I'm gonna do about a half a shank length. And what I like to do with this, because they're so fine, is kind of tie the butt ends. And then as I work this quill back, I'm kind of pulling that tail to me so that I can sort of get it perfectly wrapped on the back here. And you'll notice that you can get it fairly straight with that technique. Um, and that's what I found is kind of maybe the easiest way to do that. And then I'm going to roll forward again, back to that same spot where we essentially started. I'll roll the fly over and just quickly snip out those butt ends. Doesn't have to be perfect on that part, but just kind of snipping them out there and then folding down the rest. So just like so. And then what I want to do is take a small black UTC wire and I am going to work this pink back to just about the three quarters mark. And then we are going to tie that in on the far side of the hook. I usually start on the top and then I pull that wire to the far side as I wrap all the way back to the tail and then I come forward and now we're all about building that body. So if you're looking at the fly closely now, you can kind of see we have some ridges and bumps and humps. Paragon patterns are not super, super fat. Um, so we don't want to add too much, but we do want to make a tapered body. So what I do is I make the back fairly thin. So I try to get my back set up first. Like I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna work my thread forward and I'm just gonna build from the bead back multiple times until I think I have sort of what I'm looking for in thickness of the body. But one thing I will caution you 
up here behind the bead, leave a little bit of a cone shape right behind the bead. That'll be important for the next step that we do. So I wanna build up kind of that carrot shape on the body. Um, but again, leaving a little bit of a lip drop off on the front. All right, I really like that profile. I think that that's looking pretty good. So then I'm just gonna build up a little bit on that cone side, nothing crazy, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna stop right about a quarter of the way back. And then we're gonna start to roll our black wire up the bug. And if you do have a rotary vise, it's a lot easier to get more even wraps with this, which in the end doesn't really matter to anybody but you. Um, I don't think the fish really see how even your wire segments are, but there's no doubt that a nice clean wire segment is gonna sell a fly. So we try to do our best. All right, so once we get it up here to the top, I'm gonna do a couple capture wraps. My wire's a little bit long, so it's a little harder to capture than it would be if you had a shorter wire. And then pull down nice and tight, and then we're gonna helicopter that wire free. There we go. Then what I wanna do is a couple more wraps just to really secure that wire in there. And then what we are going to do is tie in our last material. This last material is a Vivas as well. It is a hollow tinsel. This is their medium. And the label on this one is H08, but it's like a fuchsia color. Um, so not quite pink, not quite purple, just sort of right there in between. And I love this color for this fly. I think, uh, it gives it just the right, like kind of hot spot on the fly, but it doesn't uh, damper uh, the color of the pink. So uh, I'm gonna take that hollow tinsel. We're gonna lay it right here on the near side of the hook. And I'm gonna just do one capture wrap. As you can see, it's kind of brought it on top. So I'll bring that back a couple wraps. And then what we can do is kind of pull that tinsel so that everything is flush and within the head of the fly. And then I am going to leave my thread just sitting right there. You can do the same on this one. You can spin uh, your rotary vise, which is what I like to do for the first few wraps on this. And what we're really just trying to do is get about a quarter shank band of this fuchsia tinsel going. And then once we get that, then we can do one, two capture wraps. I wouldn't do any more than that because you don't want to kind of limit the, the hot spot of this fly. And then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to trim that out best I can. Now you'll notice because I had to trim it out, we have a little bit of a tag here on the very end of that. So what I'm going to do is take one more wrap and try to get it right on the inside of that. And that'll kind of stand it up a bit. And then when I whip finish, I can sort of whip finish right on top of it. Um, but I'll show you why it doesn't totally matter. I just try to get it off the bead. Um, so here's my first whip finish right here. And there's my second whip finish. And you can see it just puts that piece of tinsel right back down into place. And it also gives you a little bit more of a secure lock on that tinsel. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna snip that tying thread free. And now we have this bug pretty much tied, but we need to finish it and we are finishing it with a solar res bone dry. And so I'm just gonna get this solar res up on top. We're gonna to get it on the bead. We're gonna get it kind of down the sides, underneath, just coating this fly with a nice clean coat of bone dry solar res. Yeah, something like that is pretty good. You could do a little bit more, a little bit less, doesn't really matter. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this baby with UV light. Nice little glow there you can see. Beautiful fly with the UV glow. You can really see that purple tinsel popping. Looks really, really good. And that should be fully coated and dry. You can touch it just to make sure. And then with most Paratagon flies, you're going to have a black wing case. And instead of doing nail polish or a black UV resin, I just take a black marker, 
right on kind of the back of the head and over that tinsel, but not really into the fly. Um, and it doesn't really matter. I just do more of like a, a line, but you could do like more of an arrow shape or a point shape, but you definitely want to have a little bit on the bead and you definitely want to have a little bit uh, covering the, the tinsel, but definitely not into the back of the bug. And then I give it just a couple uh, wafts of air. You can blow on it, whatever you need to do, just to kind of get that to dry for a little bit. And then once it's dry, we are back to the solar res bone dry. And we're gonna take a bit of a daub and we're just gonna kind of lay it right there on top of that fly. And you'll see how that really bubbles up that wing case and really gives it the appearance we want. And then I'm quickly just gonna to transition to the uh, Solar Res Cure. Get the light on there. And that should tack up our wing case and make actually a really, really beautiful fly. So this right here is JT's Buggle Gum. And it is a Peridone imitation and I just absolutely love it. I think this is gonna be a great fly for stained water. This is gonna be a great fly for salmon. Um, this will catch you trout. I mean, try using something like this, I guarantee you, under a ice fishing bobber, and you probably uh, will end up catching yourself some trout in the wintertime. So this again is the JT's Buggle Gum Fly, and this is tied in a 16. You could do 18, you could do 14. Um, that's kind of the size range that I tie these in. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If you have any suggestions on future flies I should tie, please let me know. I'd be happy to get those in my vise. And if you're new here or you're existing and you haven't before, please click that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And uh, like the video if you're really into it. And uh, that'll help other people see it too. And thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy and have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in the next one on Catching Colorado. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.